What's going on guys? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear and today we are going to be doing the full review of this guy. This is the Terrain 365 Invictus. A uh, super cool knife that was sent to the channel by my good friend Kyle J. Lamphere aka Red Wolf EDC. Uh, definitely go check him out if you are not already subscribed. The guy is hilarious. Just crazy videos. He, he, he gets like he has thousand dollar customs and or multi thousand dollar customs that he throws at the wall. That's him. Uh, <laughs> we uh, affectionately call him the uh, Leprechaun Sasquatch, which was which him and Lefty EDC go back and forth. It's it's really really fun. Uh, love the guy to death. Thank you so much, Kyle, for allowing me to check this out. Uh, links will be down below. So this might look a little familiar, right? Uh, the Invictus, uh, Prometheus Design Invictus, it's been around for a while. Um, the one you've seen on the channel was the Protec Invictus, which was a out the side auto. Out the side autos are so much are really fun, but I really like the fact that this one is a manual thumb stud knife. It does have dual thumb studs on each side. I just prefer a manual opening closing knife uh but it is fun to have an auto right that knife i thought looked cool and it's the same with this one uh the design of it i really really like it is one of those designs that i think is timeless you've got your slim handle profile you get your fuller and your blade it's just really cool looking at least in my opinion this one is quite different though uh, it is using some pretty cool materials, mainly in the blade. Uh, we have G10, titanium frame lock, titanium pocket clip, titanium hardware, but we have what's called Teravantium. And it's not a steel. <laughs> it is a material. It is a dendritic cobalt is what it is. Uh, so the fact that it is not a steel means it cannot rust. Uh, this whole knife is made out of rust proof material. Uh, now you've heard me say that before on the quiet carry products that I have that are in Vanek Super Clean, such as this Drift. Now Vanek Super Clean is nearly rust proof. That's already been proven, but it is a steel. This is not. Uh, not only is it rust resistant, but it's also non-magnetic because it has no iron in it. Uh, which, is that a thing? Um, could be. Could be for some people, right? Uh, maybe if you work in the radiology? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, you know, that's cool. I mean, I've got a magnet on my keychain. I don't put my keys in the pocket with the same as the knife, but I have had messed with the keys and had it. Yeah, that's not really an issue. <laughs> but it's something that is cool about this knife is that it is 100% rust proof and non-magnetic. If that's important to you, I don't feel a need for having a non-magnetic knife, but a knife that is absolutely rust proof, I absolutely do. Now, in my lifestyle, do I need that? I do not. I do live in Alabama where it gets very hot and humid, so some uh, corrosion is normal for some steels that are not corrosion resistant, but it's not a huge deal. This knife would be perfect for somebody who works on a boat, somebody who works in all sorts of conditions around the world and they keep their knife on them uh, and they're just going different places. I think there is definitely a market for this. And as a knife enthusiast and you know, a knife collector, I can totally appreciate having something like this in the collection that is different because I don't have any non-steel bladed knives in my collection, right? Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. The other thing that it has that I'm kind of impartial to is you do have the thumb studs with a loom in it. I thought that might have been a ceramic ball uh, whenever I first unboxed it. I didn't realize that it is a loom. I guess I can show you that. The loom, let me charge it up with my new flashlight that Lefty gave me. Fucking love that man. Uh, so the loom, in while I'm charging this, in my opinion, is not really a thing. Like, I don't know why it's on the knives. Uh, there's a bunch of them that have loom on the knives. Uh, it's not really a thing for me. As you can see, it glows. And from what I understand, this actually holds the charge a lot longer than some of your other loom. Um, so that's pretty cool. But I just don't use it. I just, you have to charge it up. It's always in my pocket. So if I get the knife out and I drop it in a dark environment, it's never going to do me any good. 
So it's kind of a gimmick to me, but it, you know, I can take it or leave it. I don't dislike the knife because it's on there, and I don't lust after the knife because it is on there. That's kind of where I stand on that. Uh, one thing I do really like about the design is the really the uh, full backspacer that you see. This thing is a full backspacer, no gaps, no nothing. It just comes right there to where that blade is and actually acts as the blade stop for the blade. I kind of like that. You just don't see that on a lot of knives anymore. Uh, full backspacers, as you can see, it's kind of flush with this surface raised here and it does have a little bit of jimping. Now the jimping that they do on this is really cool. Um, it is very shallow, as you can see, and it is the same on the blade itself, right there. Uh, so really not much grip. It's, um, I'm, I'm kind of sliding back and forth. I think it looks cool, um, but to me it doesn't add a lot of function, um, just barely a little bit of grip. So uh, people that are not really a fan of jimping, like Jake from Beater Gear, he would totally be okay with this because it's really not bad, or it's not really jimping. <laughs> uh, but it's cool because I do like the fact that right back here where it is, is a crown spine. You guys know I all love that. So how's the Ergos? The Ergos, it's a pretty neutral handle, right? So you get your main finger tool wrapping around long enough for me to get my big old meat hooks on it. And it's very, very comfortable. Uh, you know, in this backed up grip, my thumb lands right here. If I really want to choke up and get my thumb back here, it's nice because it swoops down. <clears throat> so it's nice. It does have a finger choil. However, for my fat hands, it's just too small. Uh, or for my fat fingers, rather. Somebody with skinnier fingers is probably work perfect for, for, for me. Putting my finger there, I can do it. I don't really feel like it's going to cut me, but it is. I mean... It's, it's there. It's right on it. So, um, you know, I just didn't, I never really used it because of that. It didn't really make the knife more comfortable for me, even in that grip. This, this knife in this grip feels really, really good. As you can see, the pocket clip is very nicely rounded in every place that it needs to be. So the pocket clip, obviously you can feel it because it's there, but is no hot spots. That is for sure. Um, they did a very good job on the pocket clip. Does not sit deep carry. Uh, you will have about, oh, well, I mean, it's not deep carry. And the reason I say that is because you're typical deep carry, but that's going to sit deep for anybody's purposes. I think, I mean, I, I don't think anybody will have a problem with that. Uh, I definitely don't. You guys know me. I don't care about deep carry. The action is really good. Thumb stud knife, the detent on it is really well done. Let me see, get my fingers off the lock bar. It's not gonna, it's not gonna come out. Oh, you see that? So when I really got it going, it comes out, but I mean, you really have to try hard. The detent is nice and crisp with these thumb studs to fly out of there. And then of course the closing action, running on ceramic bearings is super good. Now, this knife, is made in the United States. Terrain 365 builds these knives in the United States and their Teravantium is a din, how do you say it again? Uh, dendritic cobalt. <laughs> Words are very hard for me, guys. Um, but it's their own recipe of the dendritic cobalt. Uh, so it does have some properties. You can go and read it. I am not a metallurgist. I am not a steel expert at all. Even though I have a lot of knives out of all the different steels, I don't use them, so I can't. I mean, I don't use them hard enough to really give you a good representation of what the steel is like. There are plenty of YouTubers out there that do that, so definitely go check out that. So that's a thing. So this steel, in my opinion, works. Not steel. It's not a steel. <laughs> Works really, really well. Um, and because it's not a steel, it doesn't have a lock bar insert. Because guess what? It does not need it. Uh, so this is titanium on the uh, Teravantium. That's pretty cool. Everything about this knife I really, really like. Um, it's put together, it's made in the USA, and it really does feel like quality. The price on this guy is around $380, and you get a full tie version for around $400. So there's not a very big price difference between the G10 and the full tie. So me personally, I'd probably go with a full tie. However, they are very small drops. I don't think there's any available as of right now. Uh, I will have a link down below, and you can go check. But it's one of those things where they do very small runs. They are one of the only manufacturers uh, that are using Teravantium or Dendritic Cobalt. So uh, if you want something like that, 
that's really only one of the places that you can get it. And I think they have other models in this steel as well. If you don't like the Invictus, you can go check out their website and see if there is a model that you would like. <sighs> so as a knife, it is really cool. I, I, I really enjoyed carrying it. I enjoyed playing with it. It's very fidgety with this nice detent and action where it comes down. I can play with it really nice. I actually can get the meat of my finger. You don't have a lot of room back here to do the reverse flick. So normally where I would go and put my fingernail behind, I can't do that. But I can get the meat of my finger in there and flick it out like this. So that really did help as far as the fidginess with me being able to do that and actually play with it. I like that a lot. <laughs> comes dead center. Has a really, you know, in that back space. Woo. In that backspacer has this little cutout there. I love it when they do those little touches like that. It does have a lanyard pin for you lanyard guys out there. Very nicely done. Doesn't get in the way of the pocket clip at all. It's hidden if you don't use it. That's the way to do a uh, lanyard hole. So all in all, I really like it. It's blade bead blasted. Even the uh, uh, blade is bead blasted, which is nice. I mean, bead blasting sometimes can cause, depending on what you're using, microscopic little pits in the, in the blade, which can... I guess make a blade rust a little faster, especially if it's not passivated after the fact. And I don't know if they passivate blades after they be blast them or not. I have no idea. Uh, but blast on this shouldn't be a problem at all because it's not steel. <laughs> it really is cool to have a blade uh, and to use a blade that is not steel, um, but basically looks, feels, and cuts like it is steel. Now, the cutting performance of this blade is pretty good. It's about, it's pretty thick. It's about 30 thousandths behind the edge, but it's not going to be a laser beam. It's not designed to be a laser beam. It's designed to, to be a work knife slash tactical knife. I don't know. Prometheus design Invictus. Some people say is a tactical knife, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. Um, but the cool thing about this steel is, is that like a lot of people have said when I've seen other videos on this, that it it loses its stickiness, but it still cuts because there's like microscopic little sawtooth teeth in there in the design of how this material is done, right? I think that's very interesting. Obviously, I just did regular EDC task and it performed amazingly. How well this will perform over longer use, harder use, I do not know, but definitely there are tons of videos out there, or tons of people out there who test, test these kind of things. So I encourage you to go check that out. We are gonna do some cut tests, but we're only gonna do two. We're gonna do the paracord, which obviously is nothing. Cardboard. It's amazing how well this blade cuts through cardboard with 30 thousandths behind the edge. It is a cardboard cutting machine. Um, I, I, it still blows my mind how well this stuff cuts cardboard. It, you know, if, if you do that all day long, if you cut cardboard all day long, then, uh, this might be something to look at, especially if you look, cut cardboard on the beach, on the shore. I don't know. Uh, it was very, very surprising on how well it did that. So cutting performance, it's not a laser beam. It's, gonna, it's not going to cut like foam really good or anything like that. But your everyday task, cardboard, it's going to work really, really well. I've noticed one thing. When I get this thing out, every now and again, you do still get a little bit of lock stick. Very, very slight lock stick, uh, but like I said, there is no steel insert for this, um, but it is a thing. Every now and again, just the tiniest hint of lock stick, and really that doesn't bother me at all, because I do have other knives that have just a little bit. It, it bothers some people. It doesn't bother me as long as it doesn't hinder me being able to get this thing out of the way and close. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it is perfectly fine. So let's go ahead. We'll turn the camera around, get a closer look at this guy, do some size comparisons and some specs. Let's do it. All right. Let's see here. Let's get you a good close-up of this G10. Now, part of the ergonomics and what makes this thing really, really comfortable is the fact that these scales are contoured. I love a contoured uh, handle scale because it fills my hand out uh, really well. And, uh, and I just like it. I think it's just way more comfortable than a flat G10 or titanium surface. Both sides are contoured, as you can see. Uh, this does add some grip. These are deep enough to whenever you are holding the knife, it does add some grip, which is really nice because this knife is made to be used in wet, uh, very high corrosion 
areas, right? Which usually mean wet. And so the G10 is smooth, but it does give you grip here. It locks you in. I don't think you're going to have a problem. And I very much appreciate them putting that on there just because of that. Here is your Terrain 365 logo. Take a look at that blade shape. Really like the blade shape. Other side, you have Terravantium and USA. USA, baby. I mean, you know, and for a 100% USA made knife, you got to love that. And, you know, when we're talking about price, you know, it's expensive, but it's USA made and it's using a very exotic material for. The blade shape. Now the rest of it, titanium, G10, titanium hardware, ceramic bearings is kind of normal, right? But I really don't think it's a bad price because it is something you can't get anywhere else. Um, now, some people might disagree with me. That's fine. I actually think because 380 to 400, uh, the full tie version is actually a pretty good deal. Uh, but you know, take that for my opinion. Not everybody's going to feel the same, uh, but I think it actually is a good deal. So we have an eight and an eighth overall length on this guy with a three and a half inch blade. The blade thickness is about 150 thousandths. And like I said, with this flat grind uh, that it only goes up maybe 55, 60% of the blade, you get a pretty thick uh, behind the edge thickness of 30 thousandths, but it doesn't hinder it for the work that it was made to do, which is the harder stuff like cutting through cardboard, rope, stuff like that. Really works well. Uh, let's see what this thing weighs. I've got stuff all over my scale. <laughs> all right. So titanium. Uh, the titanium, if I remember correctly, is milled yeah it's got some pockets in there as you can see kind of maybe so uh it's not on the g10 side which is just a full slab of g10 no liner nothing like that let's see what this thing weighs right at four ounces three and a half inch blade i think those ratios are absolutely fine and i don't think anybody should have a problem carrying this uh because it does it carries it really really well Oh, got stuff all over the place. All right, here we go. Let's do some size comparisons. First off, let's do the Spyderco PM2. Spyderco PM2. Pretty similar in overall length. Maybe just a tad bit. Uh, I think this is about eight and a quarter. This is the eight and the eighth. So uh, pretty good. Now you've got a little bit wider handle here. This is definitely going to carry in the pocket better as far as the blade width uh, and the handle width. The thickness, this is probably just a tad bit thicker. Let's take a gander and check that out. I don't think it would be a problem with anybody, but I'm going to give you some measurements. So it's about a half an inch on that guy and 450. So you got 50 thousandths difference between the thickness. I don't think that's really going to be a, uh, <laughs> a measurement that's really going to be noticeable anyways. So uh, let's put it up against another titanium frame lock. This is a little bit bigger of a knife. This is the Spartan Harsey Folder. So as you can see, it's pretty, it's a pretty decent, like regular size knife. It's not a huge knife. It's not a small knife. I think it's right there as a, uh, like maybe a medium size knife. Here it is against, uh, just since we had it out here, the Quiet Carry Drift, which absolutely is a smaller knife. Uh, but obviously shares some similarities with this blade because of the corrosion resistant steels. Van X is seriously one of my favorite steels on the market right now because it does hold a pretty good edge. It is 100%. <laughs> Oh, I can't say 100% because it still is a steel, but it is nearly rust proof. Uh, and when you get something like this with quiet carry, a super thin blade, very slicey, a lot more slicey than the Invictus, <coughs> but they're made for different purposes, right? Uh, this one is made for more work applications, harder duty stuff where this one is an EDC knife. So can't knock it for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Can I recommend it? I absolutely can recommend this knife, uh, especially for those who are looking for something a little bit different. Something that is uh, USA made, uh, a very exotic material as far as the blade material. And, uh, you know, if you work on a boat for real, this and the Quiet Carry Waypoint, uh, the, uh, you know, those kind of things are, I would say, a must if you work in those kind of areas, uh, because you just don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. Uh, I could take or leave the loom in the thumb studs, but I don't think I showed you. The thumb studs are done really well because look, I mean, it's chamfered all around the podium or the, the kind of pyramid style. Very comfortable. 
to uh, to use. I didn't find myself my finger getting sore or anything like that. Uh, they did a really good job on the thumb studs. I wish these thumb studs were on a lot of other knives. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's a really cool looking knife. The fit and finish is great. Coming from American manufacturer, I can recommend it 100%. So guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and checking this out with me. Definitely go check out Red Wolf EDC. Link will be down below. Super cool guy. Uh, and thank him for allowing us to do this. Guys, stay safe in this crazy world that we are living in. And we will see you in the next one.